What if you really could manifest your dreams with law of attraction tips that really work? I want to share with you today my seven tips. I call them my seven kick-ass tips that um, will really assist you in manifesting your dreams. Before I even start with the actual seven tips I want to share, there's one thing that takes priority over everything. In order to really implement the seven tips I'm going to share with you, there's this one element that you have to have in place. And not everybody shares law of attraction this way, but that is, is staying in your heart, coming from your heart, living from your heart, from that space of love within you. See, because when you live from your heart and you're in this high vibration of love energy, then, you know, everything flows. You are such a magnet to all the good that wants to come. You're able to clearly hear the guidance from spirit, from all the help you have out there in spirit, right? Out there all around us, spirit. Um, you really must have this part about coming from the heart. So um, one way to look at that is um, what keeps you from being in your heart is that voice of the ego. All of those old programs and messages that want to come through and want to you know, dictate to you that it's hard. You know, where all the fear comes from, where all the doubt and the worry comes from. That's all the ego voice. So especially when working with law of attraction and, and manifesting, that ego voice will keep telling you like, oh, you're, it didn't come today. You, you can't do this. You know, you're crazy to think that you can just dream up things and have them come to you easily. Like that's not possible because blah, blah, blah. Remember when you were five and you heard your parents say, <laughs> you have to work hard for your money or whatever it is, like all those old programs, right? That will want to come in. You know, love doesn't come easy, right? Um, all the can't haves that were put on you as you were growing up, all those stories, they're still there, right? And the ego will bring them up and put them smack dab in front of your face and cause all the doubt and really cause you to hold an energy that is not love that is not a high vibration and you know yeah maybe you can manifest that way but boy it's gonna be it's not gonna be easy <laughs> and it's gonna take a whole lot longer if it even happens at all so what you want to do is stay in the soul space right which is that energy of the heart it's really connecting to and trusting and allowing spirit to guide you to know that you are deserving of everything you could ever dream of and that it is right there for you. It's right there at your reach and it can just come, but it can come when you live from the heart space. So that's the first part. That's the first part I really want to get in before we dive into each of the seven tips. Live from the heart. Hey, if nothing else, it feels good. Right? It feels good to feel good. And that's a contagious energy, right? So the, the, the better you can make yourself feel living right here, right now from the heart, then everything you want will come to you much more easily. It just will. You won't be able to stop it from happening, actually. So let's get into the seven tips. So for those who don't know me, I'm Linda Armstrong. I'm an awakening coach and an energy healer. And I like to share all things to do with creating a life that you love, releasing that subconscious programming that's standing in your way and just really truly living from your heart. So this first tip is find the essence of the desire. Okay. You know what you want, right? And, um, Sometimes you can get caught up in how you think it has to come or in details to do with 
this manifestation. But really, all you're required to do is feel the essence of it, right? What does this desire bring to you? What does it give you in having it? How will it make you feel to have that desire in your present reality? That's the most important thing. You have to know what the essence is, the feeling of it, what it gives to you. So if it's freedom, you want to feel that energy of freedom. You want to imagine, you know, this desire, you're living it, you're feeling it. It feels, it makes you feel free. It makes you feel relaxed or it makes you feel fulfilled or it makes you feel loved. It makes you feel, um, confident, wanted, you know, whatever it might be that it brings to you, it, uh, accomplished, you feel a feeling of accomplishment, you, you know, like what is it that it brings to you? In many cases, it's probably going to be a feeling of, of freedom, joy, peace. Maybe it brings you peace having this, whatever it is in your life. Um, happy, you know, um, carefree, right? To me, that's kind of the same as free, but it's carefree, just light and easy, right? So you find the essence of the desire and you bring that vibration into your body. So you know the desire, you attach, you know the essence this desire brings to you. So you attach the essence to the desire and then you find ways to feel it now. Feel the essence of the desire. Feel it now, because as you feel it right here, right now, that's the energy being sent out, right? We're constantly sending energy out, energy out, energy out. And you don't want to get caught up by that little trickster ego <laughs> that will come in and try to play all its little games about um it may be even trying to tell you how it has to come in and then you get stuck in your head. Well, if I do this, this, and this, then it'll come. Or it has to look this way or it has to be purple. It can't be green, you know, whatever it is. Like details, we want to get away from the details, totally in the essence. That is key. I've, did, I've created many things just by holding the essence of it, the vibration of it, forgetting about my mind and how it's telling me how it has to come or what I need to do. I don't need to do anything. I need to, but you do need to take inspired action. But when you're holding the essence of it and you're feeling good because you're living this essence, you feel this energy now, guess what? Right ideas come at the right time and it just easily manifests. So that's really key, okay? So remember that. Find the essence of the desire. So tip number two is the vibeometer. It's an internal meter that lets you know how you're vibing at any time. Because you know we, we want to live in a high vibration because the energy we send out is the energy we get back. So when we can attach a high vibration, like the essence of what your desire want, it will bring you, when you can live in a high vibe, then things come to you easily. So you want to be aware. You want to catch yourself when, when the vibration starts dipping. You don't want to wait until it crashed. And you're like, oh my God, how did this ever happen? I, I was feeling great three hours ago. What, you know, you want to catch it when it starts dipping so that you can then do things to raise your vibration. I've created a a course on that. It's a very simple course with meditations and uh, subconscious mind reprogramming tracks. Um, lots of little tips on how to shift from a low vibe to a high vibe. It's not hard to do at all. The hardest part in the beginning is noticing when your vibration's dipping so that you don't wait till you crash to then, to then have to come in and uh, repair it, right? <laughs> Catch it on the way down. So much easier to bring yourself back up. Going down, bring yourself back up. Going down, bring yourself back up. Don't wait till you crash. Who wants to live that way anyway, right? So really get used to monitoring your vibration. I call it the vibometer. It just makes it fun for me. Where am I vibrating today? Yeah. Okay, play with that one. See how that goes. And now let's move on to the next tip. All right, so tip number three 
connect to your future self. <laughs> right? So, I mean, if all time exists at the same time, your future self is out there, right? So let's connect to that future self who's all, and there could be many possible different future selves, right? Let's connect to the future self who's manifested the desire. What is that future self living? So when you can connect to that future self, so it's even like visualizing seeing that future self, seeing you living the desire, feeling the essence that it gives to you, right? Holding that high vibe of this desire that you wanted to bring into your life. But really by connecting to that future self, you're opening up this, this uh, line of energy. So that future self, will send back to you information on how you achieve that desire, right? So I like, I mean, I have this tattoo, which one? This one. I got it uh, in, a, in a meditation I did connect with my future self. She gave me a, a pink flower. My like, pink flower, what the heck is that all about? I've never been one who needed flowers. I do like gardening, um, but it, it hit me like the day later. I'm like, oh my God, of course. She's letting me know. My future self is letting me know. Just stop and smell the flowers. It's all happening. It's all been done and so much more than you can even imagine. It's in your future. You're heading towards that. And I'm sending you whatever you need along the way. So just connect to your future self. It's kind of fun too, you know, really. I mean, get back into that childlike mind with that wonder and that um, imagination where anything's possible because truly anything's possible when we come here knowing that right we just lose it along the way and now we want to bring that back right so let yourself be creative let yourself just go with it just dream up that future you out there just having a blast living this desire and um allow that connection just allow that connection just hold that connection yeah my future self has got this yeah, I've already done it. It's already done. I didn't get there yet. It's it's a couple of years down the road. It's a couple of months down the road. It's next week. It doesn't matter when it is. My future self has already done it. It's done. That's it. Put the desire out. It's done. Yeah. All right, let's move on to the next tip because there's a whole bunch of stuff coming in on just that one thing about connecting with the future self. And uh, we don't need to go there right now. Okay, so... Let's move on to the next tip. So tip number four, stop looking at what is. <laughs> Gotta stop looking at what it is. Because when you look at, you put your desire out there, right? Even if you're holding the essence of it, right? And you're really connecting to that future self and you got this good stuff going on. But then start to look at what is you're like hmm that didn't come yet I guess I'm doing it wrong blah 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 you know that you let that trickster ego come back in and dictate to you how you're doing it all wrong and you don't know how to manifest and you don't have this ability and that's a bunch of crap right you don't want you, you don't want to get caught up and down that rabbit hole you don't want to get stuck there so you have to stop looking at what is and I learned that really early on when I was first learning about law of attraction, listening to Abraham Hicks. And I think, um, you know, I, and I started, I played this game. I called it playing a game with the universe where I was going to dream up something that uh, I wanted and then send it, send it out there. So I don't want to do that whole thing. I think I might have done a video on that before. If I did, I'll just link it up here in the description somewhere or down below. Um, but basically I started noticing that what I asked for ha didn't come. And so I'm like, oh, I guess there's, this is not true. You can't just decide what you want and have it come to you. You can't just ask the universe. It's not going to give it to you because my thing didn't show up for me. It was a story with birds, you know, asking for particular birds to come. So the more I noticed that I didn't see the particular bird I asked for, the more I didn't see that bird and the more I didn't see that bird and the more I noticed I didn't see the bird, the more I didn't see the bird because that was the energy I was sending out. I was looking at what is and that really can hang you up. Looking at the absence of the desire will just perpetuate the absence of the desire. So you want to stop that because that's when all that ego stuff, all those old programs and patterns can come 
right up to the surface and really pull you off. And then you got to find your way back in. But I'm glad that happened to me because I had, when I learned that process, it really taught me how I had to just let go of it. Because when I did let go of it, it came, it was there so easy. And now, even though I learned that lesson, I have to say, I had to relearn that lesson a few times because it's, it's not easy to, um, let what is be and trust and allow what is coming to come, you know, that manifestation that, that you're looking to create. So I think that's all I'm going to say on that one. Okay. So don't, don't get caught up on what is, don't look at the absence of the desire. Keep holding that essence. Keep looking. Keep like this um, excitement over it coming. Yes, yeah, coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Hold that energy. That feels really good. Like, wow, it's going to be so cool when this thing shows up, you know, instead of looking at what is. So, all right, good. So let's go on to tip number five. Tip number five is all about future gratitude because you know gratitude is such a high vibration right so I love to use future gratitude so and I actually write it down in, in a journal I have a gratitude and appreciation journal I can write five things five to ten things I usually write like five things that I was grateful for that happened throughout the day really feeling the feeling of gratitude and like how it made me feel when this particular thing occurred during my day flip the page and write five future appreciations, feeling it as if it's already happened, right? So you write it down, blah, blah, blah. Oh, it was so great today. I can't believe it. It was awesome. I was like, I, you know, for me, I don't want to tell this whole story because this video is going to get too long, but I've had many things where I created and through through writing down future gratitudes, I would write how I felt. I would write these little stories about what happened that day. I'd make them up in my imagination, feel it like it really happened, and that was it. So it felt good to write about it. It kept me in that high vibration of it, even though it was just a story in my mind, allowing myself to feel it throughout every single cell of my body. Um, it felt good. And let me tell you, those things I was writing about, showed up and they showed up in the strangest of ways, ways I could have never had figured out it would come because I was holding the vibration of already having it. It's already having it. I was like giving my gratitude to a future event, feeling it right here, right now. It's really fun and it really works. You have to try it. Okay. Tip number six. Give it up to spirit. Yes. This is my favorite thing. And the more that you work with it, the easier it gets. So really, you're just going to trust. And I'll trust that you have this team of support. And many of you know that. Many of you can feel that where sometimes things just happen. You don't even know how it happened. Or you just get this idea pops in your head. You're like, where the heck did that come from? That's amazing. That's perfect. That's my solution. So <laughs> when you consciously decide to give it up to spirit, those things happen even more, especially as you're holding this high vibration, how you're totally connected to the essence of your desire. You got your future self on it. It's already happened. Um, and then you just trust and allow. You're like, my guides and angels, the universe has got my back, right? You're just giving it up to spirit. You're putting it out there. I had to relearn this lesson, you know, recently because I had something going on and I started getting caught up in, I, I, I really, the ego is coming back in. I had to learn this lesson in a deeper way. And I guess that's why I made this whole thing of these seven tips because I was not following them. And let me tell you, I had to bring myself back. Okay, what, what am I doing here? What's going on here? You know, I caught myself because I, I didn't even realize it. It just took hold, right? That lower energy, that ego mind dictating and nattering in the back of my mind about how I have to figure things out and I have to do this and do this and do this. But you know what? All of that perpetuated the lack of this desire. So somehow, some way, 
it just, I just like, oh my God, I'm just so disconnected. You know, spirit's got my back. What am I struggling over this for? I'm just going to give it up. I, you know, I'm going to surrender. I have to really, once and for all, learn to surrender to spirit. Give it up to spirit. Spirit's got my back. And let me tell you, when I did that, when I just decided to allow these forces that are greater than me to assist me, they're not greater than me. They just, they don't have this uh, density that's holding me back holding me, you, us, back from actually really living as our spirit. So, you know, spirit is there to help support you, to allow those things to come to you in a way that only spirit can sometimes do. Spirit can always do it. But you need to allow that connection to know you've got this connection with spirit, you know. And spirit will send you signs. You know, you... The more you notice these signs, the more you notice these signs because, again, it's law of attraction, right? So really allow yourself to be in that space. And maybe you just say, well, what if it were true that spirit had my back? What if it was so that, that I know that by holding this desire and giving it up to spirit, that it'll just show up in the right time, in the right place, in divine timing. You know, it'll just be there for me. Um, take the leap of faith. <laughs> take the leap of faith that spirit's got your back. Yeah. All right, good. So let's move on to the next tip. Okay, so here's my tip number seven. And maybe it's not something you always hear from people who are sharing, you know, law of attraction tips. But tip number seven, I call it cancel that. Cancel that. So when you have, when you catch yourself having this lower thought or having this, yeah, a lower thought telling you how, you know, you're not good at this manifesting thing. That's never going to happen. Uh, you're not good enough, blah, 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 all that. You, you acknowledge that you actually had the thought, then immediately cancel that. Cancel it. Shh. Tell the universe, no, I'm changing my order. Cancel that. This is what I mean. This is what I prefer. This is what I'm asking for. This is how it is. However you want to do it, you know, this is it cancel that any of those lower thoughts any of those lower vibrations that come in that you actually catch yourself saying i mean that happens a lot you're talking to somebody and you say something and it's really pretty much a negative statement you didn't think it was you just said it but you feel it in your body like oh my god what the, what the heck did i just I, I that happens to me i feel it i'm like oh cancel that no 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 we're not putting that out there and I change the story. And actually, by doing that, it lightens me up, right? Because then I get back into that playful, childlike wonder and fun of manifesting and creating and using my imagination. It brings me back to that space by catching that I either thought or even said out loud <laughs> this negative statement. Whether it's about something I'm manifesting or not, but just a lower vibes uh, statement. It, you know, anything, and you feel it, because you, you'll, when you get more in tune and sensitive to energy, you'll feel it when you say something that is contrary to what you actually desire. So when you do, it's very simple. Cancel that. Let the universe know. Sorry, cancel that. This is what I prefer. And it could be an internal dialogue. You don't have to say this out loud. You can. It's kind of fun. I do, depending on where I am and what I'm doing. Um, cancel that. So, uh, yeah, that's it. So those are the seven tips I had for you. Uh, I call them my seven kick-ass tips because they work. <laughs> so play with that. I'd love to hear your comments about how, uh, if you're working with these, come back to the video. Let me know how it's working for you. Play with the cancel that and the different things, connecting with spirit, finding the essence, you know, um, future appreciating. Let me know how that's going for you, right? Stopping looking at what is. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear from you. So I'd love you to like, share, comment, and uh, of course, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications for when new videos come out. And I look forward to sharing more with you. I'll see you on another video. Bye.